So a lot of people are starting to become more spiritual. They're starting to connect with that intuitive nature that is within them, but they don't know the first step. Let me tell you the first step. You must first cleanse and purify as well as decalcify the pineal gland, which is located in the center of the brain. Now, most people's pineal gland is calcified or simply underproductive. Now, you must magnify the production of the pineal gland because it helps you in your spiritual journey in three steps. The first thing it does every day for most people, even people who have an underproductive pineal gland, they still get to the first step, which is to produce melatonin. Melatonin is the hormone that causes you to get sleepy and go to sleep. If your pineal gland does not work, you will not get sleepy, and that's why some people have insomnia. However, if the pineal gland successfully completes the first step, which is to produce that melatonin, then in the sleep, that melatonin is converted into N-N-dimethyltryptamine, also known as DMT, which allows vivid dreams, which, you know, our dreams are just us tripping. Uh, you know, that's what DMT, a lot of people do DMT drug, or they'll take mushrooms that have the DMT in it, and they'll see, you know, all kinds of hallucinations. Guess what? When you dream, that's the same thing, except your sleep. And it's a natural form of hallucinogen. It's a natural form of, you know, having a vision because in your sleep, that melatonin is being converted into dimethyltryptamine. That's why you have dreams in your sleep. Now, here's how you can test if your pineal gland can get to that second step. If your dreams are in color, if your thoughts are in color, and if they can be very vivid, your pineal gland is functioning properly. However, if you think in black and white, if you dream in black and white, if you don't have any visual thoughts or visual dreams at all, then your pineal gland is underproductive, okay? Also, this, this third step is in the midst of those dreams that dimethyltryptamine is being converted into serotonin, which means that when you wake up in the morning, you are in a good mood. You are happy, you are grateful, you are smiling and energetic. If you wake up feeling like this, you know that your pineal gland has completed the third step. If it completed the third step, then you know you have a fully functioning pineal gland and there's nothing to worry about. But most people actually wake up in a bad mood. Most people wake up not wanting to even get up or deal with the day. Most people wake up actually sad and depressed. Now, for the most part, that's because of an underproductive pineal gland. But for some people, yeah, you might be going through something, something actually traumatic is happening in your life. I understand that. But if nothing bad is happening to you in your life, but you still wake up sad, you still wake up depressed, that means that your pineal gland is not converting dimethyltryptamine into serotonin, which means that your pineal gland needs a boost. Now, waking up in a good mood is essential for spirituality. Waking up in a good mood is essential because how are you going to say your prayers in the morning? How are you going to be grateful? How are you going to be uh, have a po positive out outlook of life? How are you going to have gratitude, right? You have to wake up in a good mood. This is actually natural for humans. We're not supposed to wake up sad. We're not supposed to wake up on the wrong side of bed, right? We're supposed to actually be happy when we wake up. Now, here are some of the herbs that are scientifically proven through lab research to boost the productiveness of the pineal gland. The first herb pine needles yes i know it seems coincidental that you know the pineal gland was named after the pine cone and just so happens that pine needles also affect the pineal gland in a good way uh yes but it's true because pine needles actually contain vitamin a vitamin a scientifically is proven to boost the productiveness of the pineal glands functions so also we're looking at things like mugwort because mugwort actually enhances the natural dimethyltryptamine production in the pineal gland. So uh, people, you know, they people actually smoke mugwort or drink mugwort tea just so they can have vivid dreams. It's actually uh, what draws people into buying mugwort in the first place so they can have those vivid dreams. So that right there allows you to understand that mugwort actually supports the natural DMT production of the pineal gland. The same thing can be said with sage. Sage tea also is proven to support the natural DMT production of the pineal gland as well as rosemary. Rosemary also 
supports the natural dimethyltriamine production. But here's another thing about rosemary. Rosemary is also known to help your circadian rhythm, meaning it helps you wake up at a proper time and go to sleep at a proper time and it regulates the melatonin production. So some people are producing too much melatonin and some people are not producing nearly enough melatonin. Uh, and rosemary helps with both of those things. It regulates it, keeps it in track. So not only does rosemary support a natural DMT production of the pineal gland, but it also helps to regulate that uh, circadian rhythm. Now, turmeric is known to decalcify the pineal gland and boost dimethyltryptamine production because it actually reduces the effects on fluoride in the brain. Fluoride is known to have a lot of neurodegenerative properties. When fluoride gets in the bloodstream and it gets in the brain, it actually wears down on the nerves of the brain and it wears down on the pineal gland. Fluoride draws calcium away from the bones and into the blood and the areas like the kidneys and the pineal gland, which are exposed to a lot of blood, they get calcified and they get really hard if you consume a lot of fluoride, which can be found in toothpaste and drinking water and things like that. But turmeric basically combats that because it draws away that fluoride out of the system. But turmeric wouldn't even work if it wasn't for black pepper. So you need to consume black pepper with the turmeric because when black pepper and turmeric combine inside of the stomach acid, that's two different, that's two different biochemicals. But within turmeric, there is curcumin and within black pepper that is peppering. When curcumin and peppering get together, it produces a very soluble liquid that allows it, the nutrients to absorb into the bloodstream very easily, which means you will absorb all of the turmeric if you use it with black pepper. By itself, turmeric is actually not that easy to be absorbed in the bloodstream, so it wouldn't even work that well without black pepper. Also, domania. Domania is very important because domania supports melatonin production of the pineal gland, which melatonin is what gets you to go to sleep. So domania allows you to go to sleep. Going to sleep is the first step of our spiritual journey. We have to understand how important sleep is. And then also another herb that is really good for our pineal gland is frankincense. Not just frankincense, <clears throat> but also frankincense, myrrh, pine sap, or any type of resin from pretty much any type of resinous wood. Simply because, guess what guys? There's something in resin called sesquiterpenes. Sesquiterpenes are compounds that basically stimulate the pineal gland. They stimulate the pineal gland. They produce the production of melatonin, dimethyltryptamine, and serotonin, right? So it's no wonder that when we read the Bible, we can see the importance of frankincense being burned in the tabernacle when the priests were talking to God. We see frankincense being used in pretty much all religions like Islam and things like that because the, this is something that actually stimulates the pineal gland, which actually inclines you to be a more spiritual person. Now you can go to Amazon and buy all those herbs piece by piece, which is gonna run you up a bunch of money, or you can just buy a pack of JNR and herbs, pineal gland tonic. All right, it's gonna save you a big buck, you know what I'm saying? And it works. So shop JNR and herbs, get yourself that JNR pineal gland tonic, watch you'll be going to sleep and you'll be waking up in a good mood. And that's how you're gonna know that it works. So you finally drank the herbal tea or the herbal tonic from J and Eden and herbs or whatever. Now you're wondering, okay, my pineal gland is functioning properly, but how do I actually use my pineal gland? How do I actually up my level of spirituality? Now you have to exercise the pineal gland. You exercise the pineal gland through looking at the sun. Now in the middle of the day, you don't want to look at the sun, you'll go blind. But when the sun is first rising over the horizon or when it's setting below the horizon and it's orange, you can stare directly at it and it won't even hurt your eyes. If you look at it, guess what? That's going to trigger the brain to produce melatonin. Also, staring at fire. This is what your ancestors did. It doesn't matter what race, what ethnicity you are. Your ancestors stared at fire. Fire was a very key element for everybody's day-to-day -day life, especially the shamans, especially the priests, especially the people who dealt with God, the people who dealt with the spiritual aspects of life. 
these people were very close to fire. Once you look at fire, that light stimulates the pineal gland into a state of comfort. Now that it's in a state of comfort, it can start to produce the necessary hormones. Now, here are some things that you need to refrain from putting in your body because they will inhibit this progress. Now, I'm not saying don't consume these things at all, but I am saying you have to limit it, meaning consume them in moderation a lot less than you're doing it right now. First thing, sugar. Stop eating too much sugar. That's going to mess up the pineal gland. Caffeine. Stop drinking so much coffee. That's going to mess up the pineal gland. Mercury. If you eat a lot of fish, a lot of sushi, you need to lower the amount that you eat. That's going to mess up the pineal gland. If you are getting flu shots and vaccines, man, stop that. That has mercury. That's going to mess up the pineal gland. Aluminum, which is also found in a lot of these vaccines. Tattoos. Getting tattoos all over your body. That's, per that's putting aluminum in the bloodstream because these tattoos are full of heavy metals. Stop getting those tattoos. Alcohol. If you're drinking a lot of alcohol every day, that is going to mess up the pineal gland. Alcohol should only be drinking in moderation. You understand that? And lastly, pesticides, man. So when you pick up the plants that you want to eat, the fruits, the vegetables, guess what, man? Make sure they're not sprayed with pesticides because guess what? Those pesticides will indeed inhibit the production of the hormones of the pineal gland. So you want to avoid those things at all costs. So I almost forgot guys, yeah, my outfit changed because it's another day. I almost forgot to tell you guys, if you want to take another step to releasing that dimethyltryptamine from the pineal gland during the day, in the middle of the day while you're awake, there, there's something I like to call pineal vibration or vibrating the pineal gland. If you vibrate the pineal gland, Hormones will come out of the pineal gland. You know, random melatonin, random serotonin, and random dimethyltryptamine, which means you can go into a trance and have visions in the middle of the uh, in the middle of the day. This is what the ancient prophets did. Uh, if you read through scripture, for example, people will play the harp. The harp vibrates the pineal gland. A lot of people compare the pineal gland to a pine cone but I would like to compare it to a rattle because the pineal gland rattles and it shakes if something plays that resonates with this frequency now the pineal gland is really small so high frequencies will cause it to resonate and it will begin to vibrate as well now when the when the pineal gland actually starts to vibrate it starts to shake out a lot of the hormones that's inside of it so when you play the harp or when you play any stringed instrument, but specifically the harp because it has like high pitches to it. Those high pitches, those high pitches resonate with the pineal gland. Also these low pitches. Now, some strings resonate with the pineal gland more than others, and you will feel it in the middle of your brain. You will feel something vibrating. But when you play a harp or a lyre or a canore, which are really all the same thing, or a kora, right, the West African kora, um, when you play these things, you will notice that your pineal gland will start to vibrate, okay? Now, if you have enough dimethyltryptamine in the pineal gland stored up, uh, from meditation, from, you know, fasting, from eating clean, avoiding alcohol, and being a holy person. Then what they would do is they would play the harp and all of a sudden, Yah speaks through their mind and they know what's going to happen in the future. They're prophesying. You can see examples of Elisha doing it. You can see example of King Saul. King Saul, he goes before these people and they're all playing the harp. And then King Saul immediately something happens and then Yah's spirit came upon them just like that. The prophets of ancient times, they never knew when they were going to prophesy. They never knew when Yah was going to speak to them. But when they needed uh, immediate prophecy, if something was going on and they needed 
answers from y'all immediately and they need to know exactly what to do and what's going to happen, the prophets will call somebody over who can play the harp and tell them to play the harp and they will sit down and just listen and they'll let the pineal gland rattle and then dimethyltryptamine will come out. Like I said, it's very rare for anyone to actually achieve such a feat, but I'm telling you that's what they did in scripture. Now, pineal vibration is in other, uh, you know, places in scripture. For example, Samson, he was very uh, strong, as we know, but he was only strong because the spirit of Yah rested upon him. But it wasn't always upon him. It had to come upon him at random times when he needed it. And he told, he tells you the method of which he uses to cause the spirit of Yah to come upon him. And that is through shaking himself. Samson would... He would literally do stuff like that. You'll notice when you do that, you start to see stars and, and they have all these explanations as to what that, that is. But me personally, I think you're starting to trip when you start seeing star. You start you seeing stuff. You're tripping. That's dimethyltryptamine. Okay? So what's going on is Samson, he would shake himself and then the spirit of y'all would come upon him. It says that in scripture. So that's another uh, example of you know, pineal vibration. Me personally, I don't like doing that. That's weird. It gives me a headache. So I would prefer the harp. But here's the thing. When you uh, shake yourself, here's the thing. When you do any type of pineal vibration, the thing that's going to happen is not only is it going to release dimethyltryptamine, most people, you're not going to release any dimethyltryptamine. You know why? Because most people don't have that much dimethyltryptamine stored up to be able to release enough to have a vision. You have to have a whole bunch Right. Most people, they're just going to release melatonin. And that's why I feel sleepy right now, because I just I feel sleepy now already. Like, if you want to go to sleep, I just realized if you want to go to sleep, do that. Like, you think I'm crazy? Try that. I, I feel sleepy right now already. Um, I feel tired as hell just by doing that, man. <laughs> so most people release uh, melatonin and serotonin and children you know you you know this children they do they they spin around they jump and they and that's how they get happy right their hyperactivity is what produces their serotonin when you know children like to be picked up by their dads thrown around thrown up in the air swung around you get spun around that's that causes them to release so much serotonin from pineal vibration this is why we are naturally hyper Humans are naturally hyper, but when we grow up, we're taught not to be hyper. We're taught to sit down. You know, you got to sit down on your desk, read your book, study your assignment. Then when you, when you get grown, sit down on your desk, do your paperwork. You know, you got to go to work. You can't be hyper. You know what I'm saying? Humans, but humans are naturally, we're naturally supposed to run, jump, spin, climb. That's what we always were supposed to do. But, you know, we are being conform to sit down by western society and western culture all right so serotonin is being released when you are hyperactive it doesn't matter if you're running it doesn't matter if you're jumping it doesn't matter if you're spinning it doesn't matter if you're doing anything any physical activity that gets that heart pumping is also bringing a lot of blood flow, blood flow to the pineal gland and when a whole bunch of blood is pumping in the middle of that brain guess what's also happening that pineal gland is vibrating, it's moving. And when it's vibrating and moving, it's releasing things into the bloodstream. It's releasing melatonin, it's releasing serotonin. That's why when your child, they had a, a big day outside, they was running around and they get home, they go right to sleep, right? You think that's because they burnt all the energy. No, they didn't burn all the energy. If they burned all the energy, they would die. But they get sleepy from running around because of the melatonin production that was released in the brain, especially if it was sunny outside, right? If it's sunny outside, an enormous amount of melatonin is being released. That's why I say, oh, why is she so sleepy? Oh, she was playing outside in that sun. We think it's because the sun makes us tired, but really it's, it's because the sun triggers the melatonin and causes us to be tired. We think it's because, we think the heat from the sun makes us tired. No, it's the sunlight, which, it's the sunlight getting into our eyes, triggering a big amount of melatonin, and that's what makes us sleepy. Also, when you're running in the sun, oh yeah, you're really gonna be sleepy because now you're shaking the, the pineal gland, causing it to produce a lot of melatonin, 
also serotonin. So if you want to be a happier person, if you have insomnia, another thing you do is just exercise. This is also good for the pineal gland. Exercising, uh, all this is forms of pineal vibration. All the prophets in the Old Testament were very active people. They had to work on the fields. They were warriors. They fought. They did all kinds of things. These were not people who just sat at the desk all day on a computer with their neck hunched over, mouth open, breathing out their mouth all day. No, that's not what our ancestors did if they were a prophet. They were very... The prophets of the of old, they were mountain climbers, they were hunters, they were warriors, they were farmers, they were they were uh they got on horseback. Oh my goodness, horseback, that's another thing. When you're on that horse and you're in that sun and you're jumping up and down on that horse, that is a perfect suit of the hormones necessary to actually boost your spiritual journey. Riding horses. That's why everybody who rides horses is addicted to riding horses. I don't know if you know that. You might not live down here. Well, I live in the South. I used to ride my horse all the time, but from when I grew, as I grew up and I started to drive cars and this, you know, I had to conform to society. When I was growing up, I'm only 22, but a lot of stuff has already changed. Where I used to live in rural rural Texas, it was normal to ride horses down the street if you wanted to go to the store, if you wanted to do anything. Now, you know, I had to conform to society or whatever and get a job and I had to sell my horse for, you know, lack of the affordability. It gets expensive over time. But if you know anybody who rides horses and you ask them, do you like to ride horses? What are they going to tell you? I say, hell yeah, it's fun. It makes you feel like life is worth living. You know, you're not gonna wanna kill yourself. You're not gonna be suicidal if you ride horses. That's another thing, add that to the list. You'll notice that a lot of the things that boost the pineal gland are also things that simply just make you happy. Just do things that make you happy. You know why? Because the pineal gland produces what? Serotonin. It's all connected, guys. It's all connected.